a great God. I love him so much. I want to turn to the word of the Lord. And I'm, I'm going to preach to us. And you know that thing with me, preaching, teaching, I have a problem with that. <laughs> My wife says, you always say that. Yeah, but I'm trying. Uh, last, last week, Brother Nathaniel preached a great word. Oh, the gospel, good news. I love that. I wanted to latch on, latch on to that, but the Lord, I, I, I don't know if it was my head or my heart, I don't know, but uh, maybe it'll come out, I don't know. Great, great message about the, the word and the gospel. The gospel is powerful. All of us need the gospel. So let me just say at the beginning of this message, if you don't have the gospel, you need it. It's the only way you're going to get to heaven. Heard one amen. Let me say that again. If you don't have the gospel, you need it. And if you don't have it, you ain't going. I ain't proper English, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Bible says in all you get and get understanding. You understand. Without the gospel, you're not going to heaven. Without the gospel, you're not going to heaven. Without the gospel... You are not going to heaven. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. Oh, the way is what we need to go to heaven. The truth is what brings us into his presence. The light is what he gives, gives us after we have received the good news. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've got life in my body. Amen. I've got life in my soul. I've got life to take me into eternity. And if you do not have the gospel, amen, you need it. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Now, I'd like for us to turn to, um, and this I didn't give the media back there, but it's part of the lesson anyways. Mark chapter 4. We're going to read Mark chapter 4. If you will stand with me and... Uh, Oh, Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26, and says, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth, not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the air, after that the full corn in the air. Verse 9, last. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Uh, it, is, it is important for you to understand here that God is comparing his kingdom to a seed that is sown. A man went forth and he sowed that seed. And it's, it's such an amazing thing that he, knew, he knows that the seed that he sown, you know, should, should, should grow. But even though he know that, the scripture says amazing to him. He's, he's, he's amazed by it. Amen. But nonetheless, the Bible says that seed brings forth fruit of herself. Every tree you see is brought into this world because the sower sowed it. I talked to you about the creator. He sowed seeds in the earth. Amen. Every tree is brought forth by seeds. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. In another parable put he forth, then saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his
his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went, went his way. But when the blade was sprang up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From hence then hath it tears. And he said unto them, An enemy hath made this, done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while he gather up the tears, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tears, and bind them in bundles in, to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. I'm going to ask Brother Nathaniel to preach. Uh, and please bear with me today because uh, my body is not all mine. <laughs> but I know God is going to do a work today. God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this moment. You have brought us together, God, to hear your word. Father, we pray, God, that you would speak to us. Anoint Pastor Campbell, God. Anoint him as an oracle of God. To speak your word, O oh God. Open our ears. Open our understanding. And let us receive what you have for us today in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say amen. amen. Be seated. Praise the Lord. Let me just, uh, just say thank you for being here today. I, 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 I see that there is, there is growth in the church and the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, we can't do it without you. Praise the Lord. You're important in the body. You are needed in the body. And we see that God is going to do a great work in these last days. In Matthew, we read this parable. The kingdom of God is likened unto a man that sowed seeds in his, in his field. We notice that the process, just like Mark, that the seed should grow and bring forth. But in this portion of scripture, the scripture says that there's another that came and sowed tears, an enemy. An enemy come and sowed tears. And it wasn't noticed until the blades started coming up. It wasn't noticed until uh, the, the, the seeds started growing. That they recognized something has gone amiss here. Something is wrong. How is it that <laughs> you have tears, and they recognize the growth of the seed. One was wheat, one was tear. Tear represents evil. Tear represents uh, individuals, what we, we can underscore them, wicked. Those that are evil and vile. The enemy did this because the enemy, that's his work. That's what he does. Amen? And so we need to recognize Amen. That these situations will, will happen. And just life will take place. Life will go. Life will work. And in these, in these parables, amen, the sower went to sow. We know, we know of, of, of another portion of scripture that we can actually turn to uh, still in Matthew. And if you go to verse 1, chapter 13. Verse 3, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deep depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no, no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But other fell into good ground. Everybody say good ground. Good ground. Now here you have four types of ground. 
Amen. And you need to recognize that sometimes you may be stony at one point in your life. But now you become, you become a, a, a place that you are by the wayside. And you can equate this to each, to four individuals. But I like to equate it to one heart. And the reason why I do that is because we grow in different stages. There is different um, there's different w uh, patterns that we go through as ch children of God. Sometimes you're good ground and everything that God says to you is perfect. Everything that God teaches you is perfect. You're a good listener. You're a good teacher and disciple. Amen. But sometimes we become, amen, stony ground. We, we become uh, 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 ground that is, is amongst thorns and, and, and amen. And so... I, I equate this to one person. Where are we in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this example of the foreground? I pray that we are good ground. Amen? I pray that even if we're not good ground, that we can get there. Amen? That uh, something will, will spark in this message, that we will get to a point, amen, that we will say, Lord, I need you in my life. I, I need the ground, to my ground to be fertile. I need that when you sow the seed, Lord, amen, it falls upon good ground. And, and hallelujah, I will bring forth, amen, and the whole process of the seed being sown, Falling upon the ground, the parable of the kingdom of God is so that the tree will grow and it will bring forth uh, fruits. Hallelujah. Fruits will uh, be produced from me. Fruits will come from me so that when people are around me, amen, I am not, hallelujah, amen, bitter grapes, so to speak. I am sweet grapes. They can, they can take me and grind me and use me, amen, as God will feel fit, amen, to use me in the kingdom of God. You know, David was like this, amen, but David became, amen, weary in his blessing, amen, and he looked upon the roof of Bathsheba and he saw something in the heart of David became stony ground, hallelujah. It was amongst thorns, hallelujah, and the Bible says that he called Bathsheba to his house and, and, and one thing led after the next. He became a murderer. He became somebody that hides sins. But when the prophet came to him and said, David, thou art the man. The Bible says that his heart smote him and he fell and said, oh, hallelujah. Let me fall in the hands of God. Don't let me fall in the hands of my enemies. But I know because I fall in the hands of God, he will take care of me. For his mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth. I want to fall under the hand of God. You need to get to that place. Lord, you're not just just one, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, but you are humbled before the mighty hand of God and if you by chance mess up, God can fix you, he can put you on the wheel, hallelujah, and he can, he can make you a new vessel, come on church, that's what we need, today we need vessels, today we need good ground. Good ground that the minister can work with. Good ground that the teacher can teach. Good ground, hallelujah, amen, that God can say go and he, we will go. God can say come and we will come. Good ground that faith will spring up from my heart. And God can say when I come back, will I find faith in the earth? Yes, you will find faith because the word has been sowed in my heart. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, clap your hands unto the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And notice what the instruction was. Amen. To the man and those that work the field. The master said, leave the tears. Leave them in the field. Let them grow together with the wheat. 
let them come to a place where, amen, it, it, it's, it's, it's complete. My, and, and when I look at this, I say that, well, the Lord has everything in control. He, he knows what he's doing. I, I may not understand why I'm going through what I'm going through, but God knows. Amen. The enemy came and sowed some tears and I've got to face that. I've got to live with that. I've got to, amen, just as a wheat grow up but with the tear beside me. Amen. You know what I'm talking about because, uh, amen, you may be in a place, hallelujah, where you know God wants you to be. Or you may be in a marriage, hallelujah, and your partner's not saved. And, amen, it seems like they are the devil themselves, but hallelujah. Or you may be in an employment and you know God has placed you there, hallelujah, and you are there, hallelujah, and the, 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 your employer is giving you hell. Or the people that you're working with, uh, amen, they just know how to grind you. They just know how to prick you. They, they just know, amen, I feel like uh, Paul when he says, Lord, I've got a phone in my flesh. Can you take it away? And the, the Lord said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. Endure it. In other words, eh? endure the trial. Eh? Endure the pain. Eh? Endure what you're going through. Because uh, when I come through the fire, I will be like gold. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, when I come through the end, when I, when I come through the, the end of my trials, when, when I come through my temptation, amen, hallelujah, the tears will grow with the wheat, hallelujah, and God will say, well done, the good and faithful servant. Why? The wheat will grow with the tear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel the power of God. And, amen. And, you know, sometimes we, we don't recognize that this is the will of God. This is the will of God for me. This is, this is the will of God. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue to work with God because he is working with me. He is fashioning me after himself. He is working on my heart. He is molding me and making me into the vessel that he wants me to be. Praise the Lord. And when, amen, the, and, and in these parables, the scripture says that when it comes to the end, when the end has come, the master will say, it's time for the harvest. It's time, amen, to reap the harvest. Praise the Lord. And we know what the harvest is. It's, it's uh, the tribulation. It's the time when the master is going to come back. It's the time where Jesus is going to step out of the clouds. And amen. And he's going to come back for his church that is that is been living and that has been amen living with tears so to speak and going about their business but doing God's business at the same time hallelujah it's, it's the time where he will amen all of us will come before the throne of grace and we church all of us the separation of the the tears and the wheat amen will take place and I'm praying, I'm praying now that, hallelujah, I am not a tear. <laughs> uh, I'm praying, Lord, that I have a good heart now. Because when I get there, I want him to say, you've got a good heart. I want, when I get there, he will say, Paul, you have been humbled. Amen. I'm going to exalt you. Come. Amen. Hallelujah. I want when I get there. Amen. He will say. Amen. And I remember the message. The separation of the goats and the lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. Put the, put the goats on the left. Put the lamb on the right. I don't want to be on the left. I want to be on the right. I don't want to have something in, inside of my vessel that doesn't belong there. God, while I'm walking this pilgrim road, 
take it out of me while I am coming, hallelujah, and living among my brethren, and there is nothing clean in me. Purge me, take it out, hallelujah. If you have to, Lord, put me in the fire again and let Jesus burn in me again. Because I don't want Paul, amen, to appear before the throne. I want Jesus. I need Jesus. I want Jesus in this body, in this heart, in this mind. No tear, Lord. No goat, Lord. Amen. Just good, good individual. A good tree. A good tree, Lord. Amen. I want when I appear before the Lord. Amen. This is Jesus in me. Hallelujah. Because he said, I've gone. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. But I have not leave you comfortless. Amen. I'm bringing somebody. I'm sending the Holy Ghost. If somebody feels... Amen, that you're good enough without the Holy Ghost. Think again. Amen. Joel prophesied in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Upon all flesh. Upon the young men and the old men. Upon the maidens. Amen. The handmaids and the servants. Upon the lords. Upon everyone. Amen. The spirit of God is has need to be in in every heart, in every soul, in every mind. Oh, I don't need the Holy Ghost. That was just for the apostles. Ah, read the word again. I don't need the Holy Ghost. That was just for the Jews. Paul says there is neither Jews nor Greeks. There's neither barbarian, amen, or bound. We are all under grace by the mighty hand of God. Why? Because a sower went forth to sow. Huh? Amen. The sower went forth. Amen. He sowed the seed in the earth. But the whole point of the message is that there will come a tree. Grow up a tree. Amen. A tree that is a good tree. Brother Nathaniel, you have some Kleenex. Amen. My, my head. <laughs> Praise God. I feel like, amen, that son. Oh, amen, that was given to the Shunammite. My head, my head. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is a praise break. Come on, church. This is a praise break. Praise the Lord. Amen. See how upset my mind is? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So he says the whole process of the sower is to have a seed. The seed that will grow in the earth. The mystery of this man that says, uh, amen, uh, I don't know how this happened. Amen, how is it that this seed grow? Amen, but the whole process uh, of the situation, church, uh, is that we need to understand God did not do anything by accident. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't believe in evolution. I don't care if they have proof of it. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? And they have lots of so pose truth. But the thing with science is, amen, if this theology doesn't work, somebody else will come up with a better one. And somebody else will come up with a better one. And that's the whole process that science is built on. And they, yeah, they do their models. But Job asks a very important question. Matter of fact, God asked Job a very important question. He said, were you there when the foundation of the earth was spread? Where are you, Job? Well, how can you talk as if you know everything? I'm sorry, but the knowledge of man is limited. 
I'm sorry, but every model that they put forth is a lie from the devil. Amen. He told Adam and Eve in the garden, you will be like God knowing good and evil. They were already like God. <laughs> God said, that tree in the midst of the, of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it because it is the knowledge of good and evil. They knew it. They knew it. So, what happened? Well, you know, the devil deceived them. The devil caught them. Amen. Shook them by the roots. Amen. And they disobeyed. You know, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> we need to understand, praise God. Amen. God does not do anything by mistake. He spoke in creation. He stood forth and he says, in the beginning, let there be light. Mm, and there was light. Amen. Light that was hid in the darkness uh, shook itself when the word of God went forth uh, and sprang forth. Hallelujah. Here I am. You called me? Yes, I called you. Amen. And night, amen, and the evening was the first day. And from that, amen, hallelujah, when the time comes. I'm here, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Next day. I'm here, Lord. Amen. Light always springs. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? In obedience to the sower that sowed his seed. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want to, uh, I want to go into my notes. I haven't even looked at it yet. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I told you I had a rough time putting this together. God knew. Let's turn to Luke chapter, Luke, okay, where am I? Luke chapter 4. I want to talk about something here that will let us into the whole aspect and, and building a foundation, amen, of this, of this passage of the sower. I believe, and I haven't even given you my, my, my title yet, but I'll come to that. Amen. I believe that we need to realize as God has spent time and he has sown seed and he, he, he grew man out of the dust. Amen. Planted him and gave him breath. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when he planted man, man became a living soul. Amen. After the image of God. God and the Bible teaches us, uh, amen, that man was the lowest of creation. He placed man on the totem pole, so to speak, but he did not make a mistake. Amen. Man who was created after his image, after his likeness, amen, he brought man and he said, I'm going to give you dominion, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to set you as, uh, amen, over the, the, my, hand, my hand creation, uh, over everything that I have made. I've given you the power, amen, to reign and to rule over, over the earth. Um, hallelujah. But the Bible says and teaches us, uh, amen, that Satan in his heart, pride was found there. And the reason I think, uh, amen, that the devil saw and acted upon his pride was because he understood he was not the main man in heaven. He was, he was, he was, he was created powerful and, and mighty and, and glorious. Amen. But some, someone, someone, Adam, who was created lower than him, he saw that. And he says, something is, something is amiss here. And I got to do something. So the Bible says, amen, he tried, to, he tried to fight against Michael and the angels. And he was cast out of heaven. Amen. And he went into the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, he deceived Eve. And one thing happened, church. The tree, man, fell. It, it wasn't rooted up. It just fell over. Because the Bible says that sin entered. And man became, amen, ungodly now. Man became, 
amen, praise the Lord, uh, uh, in a way that God now cannot, cannot move with him as he did. Because the Bible says that he was able to, to move in and out, to, 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 to face man face to face, but after the sin, amen. And not only that, but the garden that he was placed in, he had to be thrown out because what else was in the garden? The tree of life, amen, that he was, he was able to partake of freely, to eat the fruit of life freely. But I wanted to go to Luke chapter 4. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, and Jesus being, verse 1, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, uh, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Amen. And from verse 3 down is where I want to build something. Praise the Lord, Satan, amen, deceived man in the garden, took from man his dominion of the earth. Did you know that? He stripped from him the dominion of rulership. He placed on him an evil heart, though they did not know this, but not long after they started learning exactly what they have become. Praise the Lord. Cain killed Abel. Amen. And the, 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 down, the down grade or something. Amen. Downward force forced them into greater darkness. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, but God had a plan. There was nothing that he did by mistake. Uh, there was nothing that he did because what? Uh, amen. The Bible tells us that the sun, amen, it will rise upon the just. Uh, and the righteous, and the unjust, and the wicked. God had his reign. He had his dominion. And he does not do anything by mistake. In other words, things have to play out, church. But listen to Luke. Praise the Lord. And verse 3, the scripture says, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made what? Bread. And Jesus answered and said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. The second temptation. Amen. And the devil taketh him up into a high mountain and showed him, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. How was he able to do that? Because he had dominion. He had power. He had rulership. He had sovereignty over the earth. Amen. That God had spun into being. And verse 6. And the devil said unto him. All this power I will give to thee. And the glory of them. For it is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will give it. You know. Hallelujah. His heart was to gain power and dominion. Because those seed that God has sown in the earth uh, that became man, that became, hallelujah, his vessel, his, his tree, so to speak. Uh, amen. The devil wanted all of it. He wanted all of it, church. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. <coughs> amen. He wanted all of it. He, he didn't just want to... Amen, be glorified, worship in heaven. Amen. He did not want to just sit in the altar of God. Amen. To receive the praise of the angel. You don't know what happened. His place in which he was at was a high place of glory. Amen. He was, I say, second in command next to God. Just like Joseph was second over Pharaoh and, and Pharaoh said, and I think this is a, a prophetic, amen, announcement to what's happening in heaven, amen, during this time, uh, Pharaoh said, uh, Joseph, I'm going to exalt you, I'm going to give you uh, authority and power, and you're going to be great, greater than me, but only if I'm in my throne. Then I will exceed you. So when Joseph, when Pharaoh leave his throne, when he had to go to bed at night, who was higher than jo and than Pharaoh was in his kingdom? Joseph, that God exalted. 
and this is the this is the vision amen of of Satan he not only wanted to be high when he was in his throne but when he was not in his throne amen he wanted to be higher than God he wanted to be higher than God and the Bible says amen hallelujah amen Jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me Satan for it is written thou shalt what worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve when when Satan threw this, uh, amen, this power and this exaltation in the face of Jesus. Uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Because you were created to worship him. You were created to worship the Lord. You were created, amen, to adore him. Get thee behind me. Third temptation. Amen. Verse 9. He brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down from thence for it is written he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee amen hallelujah and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone verse 12 and Jesus answered oh I love that Amen. And said, amen, hallelujah, unto him it is said. Now he said it is said instead of it is written. Did you notice that? First two, he says it is written. This third temptation, he said, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from the Lord. So I want to just draw from these scripture, amen, this, 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 this understanding that Satan understood what it means when Jesus said, it is said. First through temptation, the word was what Satan had to abide by. The word that God spoke in the beginning, let there be. The word that God said, I'm going to send a virgin, Genesis 3 and verse 15. The seed of the virgin is going to bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. Thou shalt bruise his heel. That's all you're going to do, Satan, is bruise his heel. But the son, the son, the son, amen, who is now, amen, was cast as a seed in the earth. Just as all men was, amen, hallelujah, those men, amen, and let me, let me put it to you. That Adam, the first Adam, hallelujah, amen, that was created after my image, after my likeness. He fell, he, he messed up, amen, but the second Adam, amen, the second Adam, you know the second Adam, amen, the son of God, amen, and the devil said, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, amen, worship me, worship me, worship me, church Amen. The devil has us. Amen. Because we disobeyed God. Amen. In the garden. Amen. And so we fall to his worship. We fall. But praise the Lord. We don't have to continue to stay down. Praise the Lord. Satan. In, in, in Luke chapter 4. Tempted, tempted Jesus. With all that he had. With the deception. Amen. With the conspiracy. With, with shady craftiness. Amen. And shifting spirit. Satan in all his gift. Throw it all at Jesus. Amen. Tempting him. So that he can fall like the first Adam did. But I stand here. Amen. The wheat will grow with the tear. I stand here to let you know, amen, we see Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. We see Jesus who was tempted in all points like as we were, yet he did not fall to the devil's, amen, the devil's conspiracy. He did not fall to the devil's schemes. He did not fall, amen, hallelujah, to the power of lies and deception. Amen, hallelujah, for Jesus said, it is written, Satan, uh, amen, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, amen, thou shalt worship, first of all, God, like everything that he had uh, created with the span of his hand, with, with the knowledge of his word, amen, every host, every tree, 
every river, every branch, every individual. Amen. Let them worship the Lord. Let them praise the Lord. Let them exalt the Lord. Hallelujah. And so every angel shall worship him. Satan has no choice. When the Lord said that, he split. <laughs> he said, okay, I'm getting out of here. Amen. He ran. Amen. And I love, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan, you got to see who you're tempting. T Satan was humbled by the written word, and he was more humbled by the spoken word. What do you say? How did he, Jesus spoke it in, in the last? He said, because you've heard. Past tense. These things are not, are not strange to you, Satan. You who were created, amen, in, the, in eternity, understand, amen. It wasn't just you, amen, who was speaking the glory of God. You had other angels telling about the things of God. You have other angels like Michael. The Bible says that, amen, he was the archangel. And Gabriel, amen, the mighty warrior of God. He, they expressed, amen, to Satan when they came with their worship. And they, they, were, they were given his worship. He had to receive it. He knew in his mind and in his heart, amen, that there was only one to be worshipped. There was only one that worship belonged to. There is only one that worship should go, go to. Amen. Hallelujah. And Satan amen, was humbled by what Jesus said. You've heard. It's been said. You know. Amen. And for that he split. The Bible says hallelujah uh, that we have to recognize the problem of man here. He had a problem. Man had a problem. Man had a problem of his own words. Just like Satan does. Man has a fault, and it's not, amen, the fault is, is, his dark, is his dark heart. He said, well, I'm not dark, I'm a good person. No, you're not. <laughs> amen, we are all, the Bible says, shapen in iniquity. We, we have been born out of that first Adam. Everyone that comes into this life, amen, is marred by the fault of his own heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that you may have a good and peaceful mind, but uh, right behind that, amen, is wickedness. Uh, if it is fed, if it, is, uh, if it has been influenced by the tears, uh, if it has been influenced by the enemy, if it has been influenced, that's why we need to be influenced uh, by the word of God and by the word that is above everything else, uh, the word that is, hallelujah, exalted. Heaven and earth shall pass, uh, but my word shall not pass, saith the Lord. Amen. I love, David said, I love the word of God. I love the law, the statutes of God. Why? Because if he did not love it, he would sin. Hallelujah. The heart is darkness inside of all of us. It's not your fault you have lost your, your reasoning. It's not your fault your heart is wicked. It's not your fault you have lost your dominion and power. It's not your fault sin entered into the world. You did not have anything to do with it because you weren't there. But just because I weren't there does not mean I'm not affected by sin. The problem, church, is not hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is brought on by sin. The problem, church, is not murderers in the world. Amen. Murderers are brought on by sin. It's not your, your fault. Amen. You may say, but listen, we are all guilty. Amen. We're all guilty. Amen. Matthew 12. Verse 32 says, whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever uh, speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You see what verse 32 did? It died, it, it ties the earthly kingdom with the heavenly kingdom. 
We are connected to the heavenly kingdom. Now, you may not believe it, but you are connected to the heavenly kingdom. You will make it to the heavenly kingdoms. The thing, the thing about the, the, the kingdom, amen, is that it has two roads. It has two paradises. One is of Abraham's bosom. The other paradise is hell. You say hell is a paradise? It's a holding place. Hell, the Bible said, will be cast into the lake of fire. It's a holding place. You have two choices, heaven or hell. I want to make my calling and election sure. Now listen to what verse 33 says in Matthew 12. Neither make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his... Say it again. His. Say it again. His. Praise the Lord. And then he went on and said, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you, you see what I've just finished telling you? You think you're not good or you think you're not bad or you're not, you know, you're not corrupt like some folks are. But oh, generation, he was dealing with those who should know better. He was dealing with the scribes and the Pharisees, those that have a form of godliness, denying the power. Those that think they're okay, but denying this, the Son of God. Those, those that don't have a revelation, church, amen, of the mighty God in Christ. Satan says, I don't know you. If you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. If you be the Son of God, he will give his angels charge over you. If you be the son of God, all the fame of heaven and earth, uh, rather of earth, I will give you. And the Bible says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All oh, generation of vipers, hallelujah. Verse 35, good man out of the good treasure of your heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give a counter off in that day of judgment. When the Lord says to the angels, it's time to separate. It's time to come. It's time that time will be, will be no more. It's time that every man from Adam, the first Adam, amen, to the last baby, amen, at that time of, of, of the rapture, come forth, amen, and be placed before the judgment seat of God. And they have to give an account. You say, how can I, how will I appear Am I evil? No. Am I bad? No, maybe not. Amen. But everyone shall come before the presence of God, even those that think idly. You know what an idle person is? One that doesn't like to work. <laughs> You're an idol. You look at everybody else and you judge them. But you're sitting over here, you know content in your own in your own deceit you hid in your own you know maybe pride just like satan was amen you think you have something amen above everybody else amen you might look at that and say that's an easy sin sure it may be easy but to that individual that is struggling with that is not easy because he has to be he has to be rooted that has to come out of him or her praise the lord in other words all the sins that we have that we have at birth needs to come out. How does it come out? Well, you need, hallelujah, amen, the hope of all worlds. You need to be able to say, Lord, am I a good individual? Am I a good servant? Have I proven myself in this world? Because there is heaven and there is hell. 
For sure, I don't want to go to hell, but I want to go to heaven. I want to walk the streets of gold. I want to walk with Peter, Paul, and Amen, Mary. How do I know that they will be there? Because they gave their life to the Lord. Amen. They are witness of his message. Amen. They preached the word. They lived the word. They were, hallelujah, seeds of righteousness because they have found the lamb. They have found the one, hallelujah, it was able to redeem them from all sins. They have come to the one that's, oh, that was able, amen, to put their feet upon solid ground. They followed the way when they heard it. Uh, John the Baptist says, behold, the son of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Brother Nathaniel, that was the good news that they needed to hear because the Bible says that they went and, and followed the Lord. What is the good news to you today? Amen. What's the good news? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I know I'm, I'm taking a lot of time and I want to just wrap up. Amen. Praise God. The good tree. Are you a good tree or are you a corrupt tree? That's the question today. And I hope, amen, that we will be able to recognize if you are corrupt, you will get good. If you are good, you will get better. <laughs> you thought I was just going to rest that good? Amen. If you are a corrupt tree, I want to turn it to Psalms chapter 1. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the what? The counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Praise the Lord. I want to tell somebody today, you, if you are corrupt, you can be blessed. If you are evil, you can be blessed. If you are somebody, amen, who is just, amen, despising others, looking down on them, you can have, hallelujah, amen, a new beginning. You can be blessed. Blessed is the man that what walketh not in the council, but walketh in the word. It is written. It is written. And sometimes you may not know how to search out the written word of God, but you've heard enough testimony. You've heard it even in this preaching today. You can't say that you have not heard it. Now you have heard it. Last week, if you were here, you heard about the good news to get you on the path of righteousness. And now you have heard that the sower went for the sower. Amen. He that soweth all things is God. He that spoke all things, amen, into being is God. But there's also another good man, another good sower. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he told the disciples. And you read Matthew chapter 13. Amen. The whole complete chapter. And you will realize, hallelujah. Amen. That the sower is sowing the word. But there are four grounds. And in those four grounds, you are one of them. You are one of them. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the man that is blessed is delighting himself in the law of the Lord. In his law doth he meditate. He meditate day. Every day he meditate. God, am I good enough? Amen. God is my soul right. God is my heart right. God, have I offended anybody today? And I'm talking to myself because when I get mad with my wife or I get mad with my sister or I get mad with my brother or I get mad with my co-worker or I get mad with somebody, amen, I've got to go before the Lord before the harvest takes place and I've got to repent of my sin. The David said, I have not sinned against man but against God, against him only have I what? Done my done." My my thing amen against God I have sinned amen and so because I have sinned against not man but God I've got to make my penance I've got to repent of my sins those sins that what separate me from God amen hallelujah hallelujah Jesus verse 3 and he shall be what like a tree planted by the rivers of 
that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Here is the key to a prosperous life. Prosperous life. The ungodly are not so. But are like the, the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Here they are. There's two different Different aspect of being in heaven and being judged. The, the, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. In other words, because he will not stand in the judgment, he's already judged. He's already judged himself. And God don't need to rejudge him. He has already judged himself. So God will say, just pass on. Just pass on. When all of us come before the throne, just pass on. He knows. How does he know? The Bible says the angels write our story. Every one of us have a, a word, a thought in our mind, and we think it's just gone to the wind. No, every thought is recorded. Every intent of the heart is recorded. And you, you're not going to escape it. Amen? Amen. I was, I was looking at a message, amen, thought this was be the one where, amen, those who are pompous and those who are, you know, think that <clears throat> when they get to heaven, <clears throat> they'll face God and say, you know, I don't believe what you have done in the earth. And you are such a good God, why did you do this? Why are your babies dying? Why, why does the seas come? Why does, my, why does my mother and my wife that I love so dearly, why did death come upon them? They'll have something to say to God, they think. They come before the throne of grace. I can see them coming with their high and pompous, you know, thoughts. I've got all my thoughts written down. Okay, I checked the point A, point, point B, and here comes the throne. And before he opens the mouth, God is sitting on the throne saying, <laughs> Let me open his mouth. Just to the left. <laughs> Nothing to say. Nothing to say. You ever been there? You, you, you know, you, you've rehearsed. You're going you're gonna to go into a very important meeting and you've rehearsed everything that you, go, you know you want to say because you have, you have, a, you know, you, you have an agenda. And uh, you, you, you're going to line that person up. Maybe it's your boss or something. And you come before him. And before you even speak, I want to have a witness against you. Speak. And you can't even say nothing. And you realize, hey, you don't have control here. <laughs> you don't have control. Amen. Oh, but when those who are righteous, who, who've taken care of their sins, who've taken care of their wicked heart, who've taken care of everything else, Brother Nathaniel and the musician, please come. If you don't come, I'm going to keep continue. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And, uh, and, and they think that, okay, Amen. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, <coughs> nor sinners <coughs> in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, what? Knoweth. Uh, you got you to gotta underscore this, this word. Knowing is not just a head knowledge of somebody. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Every path. Every word, every jot, every tittle, every action, every sentence, every action that you have taken, whether good or bad, amen, if it has been good, the Lord knoweth. If it has been bad, you cover it with the repentance and the blood of Jesus. So that is not even recorded against you. The righteous have something to say when they come into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even in that, they don't even have to say a word because the master knows. He understands. 
Amen. I, I saw Jesus up, and Jesus became my shepherd. Up. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, Psalms 23. I shall not want. Up. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Up. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Up. He restores my soul. Up. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness up, for his name's sake. Up. He sowed me in the earth. I'm a tree of righteousness and everything I do because I do under the inspiration of the master because I did it I did it to amen because he's in my soul because my life now was changed amen because he renewed my heart he renewed my spirit he made me one of his I am righteous in his sight makes me to lie down in green pastures. When I'm not lying down in green pastures and I'm struggling against things, he restores my soul. Oh, when my enemy is coming and they're warring against me, as David said, Lord, teach my hand to fight. What David was saying, Lord, I see you and I want to be like you. We see Jesus in you. We see Jesus on you. We see Jesus, amen, desiring, amen, hallelujah, to use you because he knows you are his. In the path, in the, in, 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 in the, the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear because he is with me. <laughs> Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me in my valley. Jesus is with me as I am walking and I am going into this path. And when I get to the end of my journey, Jesus, I will see I will take my crown off of my head, the crown that he has placed upon me. And he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Before I even get to the throne, he's at the door saying, enter into the joy of the Lord. says verse 1 in Hebrews God who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. And when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down. What did he do? What did he do, church? Where did he sit? Romans, uh, Revelation chapter 5. There is one that sits on the throne. Uh, and the angels around the throne. Uh, they all sing, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. He is worthy. He sat down on the throne. He is worthy. And the Bible says, he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty. Scripture didn't say he sat down on the right hand of God. He sat down on the majesty. You search that word and you read, realize that the majesty of God is the glory of God. The 
majesty of God is the power of God. Praise the Lord. The majesty of God, amen, is Christ himself. And that same majesty, when he created man, said that he has crowned us with glory. You are crowned. You've lost your dominion but because of obedience to the word of God, you have received it again. You are no longer destitute and lack of power. In, in Romans, in, in Hebrews, the Bible says that he exalted man, giving him a name. That man is Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, I have given you my name. Each one who is redeemed to have a name. It's written in the oracles of God. And, and we may not know the name that we have been given, but he knows it. He knows your name. He knows what he has, what he has given you and what he has found you with. And the Bible says, being so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance of pain a more excellent name, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And I can read this whole chapter, but I'm going to close. You are here today. You don't know. So the change has come. 